ago. And uh, I had intentions, and I did. When I retired, I, I went on with the coroner's office as a deputy coroner about last August or so. Uh, during the years I was working with the state patrol, I, you know, you, when you're in law enforcement and you work wrecks, you have different contacts and associations with wreckers and, you know, EMS and hospitals and things like that. Y'all, I found that uh, in the coroner's office of Lowndes County, I thought, and I still do strongly believe, that there are some changes that need to be made. Now, I'm certainly not going to get up here and talk bad about the incumbent that's in office because he is a Democrat and he's not here to give me dirty looks or defend himself. But anyway, I offer myself a service to the coroner's office. It is my goal to increase the level of professionalism that's at the coroner's office. Uh, those of you my age and maybe a little bit older know of times in the past where there's been uh, I'm just going to say a lack of professional service in that office. And uh, coming from the State Patrol, I have a firm belief that when you are a employee, whether you're an employee or elected official for the citizens, that it is your duty, you should not be in that position unless you are willing to provide the utmost and professional service and help our citizens. The coroner's office is not something that you really can get people excited about running for coroner I've found so far. I've never run for public office. I'm not in the funeral business or anything like that. But I'm here tonight and I'm glad to be here to talk to y'all and meet you and I would be glad to speak with anyone after the meeting or whatever. If they have any other questions, would like to know anything else about me, I'd be glad to tell them. And uh, I would ask that you would consider me as a candidate and that you would support me and uh, of course, like everyone else running for office, I can always use contributions. But mainly, I, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing it to increase the level of service for the Lowndes County Coroner's Office. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, Lowndes County is a special in the 159 counties in Georgia because we are the only county that elects our tax assessors. Uh, we have three tax assessor posts. Um, Democrats qualified for all of those tax assessor posts. Uh, no Republicans qualified for any of those tax assessor posts. Uh, one of the posts has two candidates, um, Mr. Doyle Kelly, who was here last month, and he's not here this month, uh, and Bob Doerr. So Bob Doerr, would you like to come and tell us why you should be the next tax assessor? Bob Dewar. I'm a lifetime resident of Lowndes County. Um, I came here to meet you, ask you for your help and your vote, and to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the real estate business in Lowndes County for over 30 years. I'm a real estate appraiser. I'm qualified by the state of Georgia to, to appraise any type property uh, from, a, from your residents. Uh, to the motels and the shopping centers, uh, industrial buildings. Um, I've qualified to do all of those with the state um, as a state certified general real property appraiser. Um, I have served uh, previously as a, on the planning commission for five years. I was chairman of the planning commission the last year I served. Uh, and I have also served on the board, Lowndes County Board of Tax Equalization, which is the appeal board if you don't like your assessment and you don't get anywhere with the tax assessors, you can follow it up and go on to the Board of Equalization. And I served for a little while on that and I had to take some education with the state for a week at Lowndes County's expense. Um, and I can use that again um, that is, a, and that, the Board of Equalization is a grand jury appointment. Um, the reason that I think I can do something as a tax assessor is I bring some knowledge um, 
that they have not had before. Um, as has already been said, all of the counties in the state have professional property appraisers that are appointed, and they have some qualifications in most cases. They've been to school and they've gotten some education. That's not the case here. We're elected. Um, and the level of, it, of education is not here. Um, over the last 30 years, I don't know how many times we have had to be revalued, but several times the state will come in and they will tell us that our tax ratios are out of kilter with what they should be. And what happens then is the tax assessors have to hire outside people to come in. And in some cases, we've spent more than a million dollars to get outside people to tell us what our tax values are. We shouldn't be having to do that. We should be keeping up with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's the main thing that I am here that I think I can do because I have the experience as an appraiser and the background. Um, and I've made a living in the real estate business. I, I buy and sell, I broker, and I appraise and work as a consultant. Um, and I'm glad to be here, and I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. We have a new county commission districts um, that we'll elect people to this time. We have county commission district four and county commission district five. I'm sad to say that we did not qualify any Democrat to run in county commission district five, which means we'll get a Republican. However, we did qualify two in district four. So we will hear first from Ellen Lane, Mr. Lane. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few encouraging words to the Democrat Party. Uh, my goals this year, uh, just my goal as a commissioner is to keep the district informed of what's going on. Uh, looking forward to having quarterly meetings with the, with the citizens of Lawrence County. I'm a firm believer if, if, if the county and city would come together and work together, it would be a greater place because if you take the, some screens and put some screens together, and you, once you put those screens together, they become one fabric. And I think that's what we need to have in Lyons County. We need to come together, woven together, and become one fabric. Another thing, uh, work with all the commissioners, regardless of what affiliation or party they are part of. We're looking forward to that challenge of working with, with the people. You know, we, sp we spend a lot of money being divided rather than working together. Uh, uh, if I got my own agenda to the left and somebody got their own agenda to the right, and it's just costing the taxpayers a bunch of money. Uh, another thing uh, to help bring jobs to Lawrence County, we need to get some jobs here, some, some good paying jobs here in Lawrence County. And, and my fourth thing is uh, work with all the communities and community, communities, which is in Lawrence County. Uh, we're looking forward to that challenge of working with them. And and then another thing we need to consider, uh, get all the roads paved in Lyons County for those who want the road paved. There are some people don't want road paved, and I keep hammering on that. Uh, but uh, for those who want them paved, we need to get them paved uh, in everything because uh, that's what we're all about, and I, that's, this is my platform. Thank you, sir. And our other candidate, Demarcus Marshall. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Demarcus Marshall. Um, I recently uh, qualified for Super District Number Four. Um, to be truthful with you, I didn't intend on running uh, for uh, office uh, this early in my life. However, uh, after reading a newspaper article. Uh, by a gentleman that I sat next to at a Democratic social um, that put some things in the paper that were contradictory to what he had, what he had said sitting beside me, it kind of hit a nerve. 
and it made me think to myself, what kind of integrity, what type of honor is amongst us now as Democrats? Where do we go at this point as Democrats? I would even go as far as to say, you know, you know, we may need to look at purging our rooms just to know who are among us, who are truly Democrats, as well as, uh, you know, who really have the people in mind. I have several goals uh, which are similar to Mr. Uh, Lane, community and economic development. I hope to bring jobs to the eastern portion of the county in which the uh, majority of the county is located in. I like to uh, have safe neighborhoods, uh, get more patrols, support the sheriff department. I, I feel they're doing a great job. Um, public transportation. I like to also work on our conference and tourism uh, authority. I feel that you know we, we need to take a different approach about how we uh, market the city for one, as well as how much it costs to actual use the facilities. Um, you know we, we need to start looking at it as a as a as a, a, a bigger metro. Think about economic impact. Say if you get 10,000 people from a, one particular organization to come here, and they stay for a week, you know that that economic impact can be well up to five, ten million dollars. But we worried about getting ten thousand dollars in one day. You know we st we got to start looking at the bigger picture of things. The other thing I promise is fiscal responsibility uh, with the taxpayer dollars. I honestly feel that uh, you know we have to prioritize our projects. If we don't have the money to do them, you know, we might need to hold off. You know, we might need to rethink what is important and what isn't important. But at the same time, do not come and say that we're going to cut back jobs, public sector jobs, and hey, you, you're talking about building something that is not going to be anything effective for the community, for the kids, and for the elderly. The other thing is, I believe that everyone has a voice in the district. I feel that you know, transparency is very much needed. I hope to address all citizens' concerns as well through mail or calling to find out what they, what they think about an issue prior to voting on it, not after. I think it's very important that the citizens be actively involved in the political process. Lastly, I hope to work with local leaders to develop a county citywide development plan. This includes revisiting our service delivery strategy that we currently have in place. I believe the city and the county, we can, we can work together actually. I hope to bridge that gap that exists, that animosity and that gridlock, so we won't be fighting about pennies, spending thousands and millions of dollars to go to court with something that we can sit down to at the table with ourselves. At some point in time, we're gonna have to leave politics at the door. We're going to have to come in and sit down. Maybe, maybe we don't need to uh, you know, bring the lawyers in. Maybe let's have some food. Maybe have us some sodas or drinks and talk about something real. Why? Because the funds come from the same source, which is the taxpayer. So you know, instead of having two separate goals, the city got a goal, the county got a goal, we can sit down and move forward together because it's the same money. That's why I sit. Lastly, uh, I wasn't aware that one of my former uh, good friends slash mentors were running, uh, but I'm happy to be running here with him. Alan Lane, I remember him from years ago with the Layman Group. He was one that was boosting other young men to come forward and get involved in the political process and be actively involved, and I hope I make him proud with this too. Y'all have a good day. Thanks. Joyce Evans has joined us. Joyce Evans currently serves on the County Commission representing District 1. She is running again for District 1. She is running unopposed. Joyce Evans, would you like to come talk to us? No. <laughs> Joyce Evans. Okay, and this is somewhat awkward for me, but I, I am Gretchen Quarterman. I am the chairman of the Lowndes County Democratic Party, and it is my goal to become the chairman of the Lowndes County Commission. I am running for county commission chairman. And um, I've been watching the county commission three or four years now, and uh, I have some changes in mind. I have changes in mind that our county government is going to become more transparent. 
It's the government of the people. It's not the government of um, the elected officials. It's not the government of the bureaucrats. It's the government of the people, and it needs to throw its doors wide open and be a service industry. Um, it needs to be good stewards of the resources that are entrusted to it. Um, like Mr. Marshall said, we shouldn't be fighting over stupid stuff and drawing lawyers in. We need to get together and figure out how to do that on our own and not waste our money. Uh, tax money is very hard to come by. Nobody likes paying it. Um, we need to be very good stewards of it. And the last thing is we need to provide opportunities for our entire community. Our community suffers from terrible poverty, and that's because we don't have the right kind of jobs here. We've got to figure out how to bring the right kind of jobs here so that our young people, I see a little group of young people there, and I know that in three years they won't be here anymore. They'll have had to move away to get a job, and we need to bring the jobs here so that they can stay here and live in this really great place with the rest of us. So those are our partisan races for which we have candidates. We also 